What used to be considered one of the most dangerous countries in Latin America has now become one of the most popular tourist destinations. Welcome to El Salvador, a country whose food, culture, and scenery has won everyone's heart. I'm Eunice and I'm going to show you traditional vegan dishes and restaurants you can enjoy during your visit to El Salvador and what sites you need to see. Let's go. The first stop was to try El Salvador's most iconic dish, pupusas. Okay, so one of the things you have to know is, is as soon as you land in El Salvador, close to the airport is Olocuilta, which is known for having the best pupusas. You come here and you will see tons of different stands. You will be overwhelmed because you won't know which one to pick, but you will pick whichever one you want. I'm sure they're all really good. One thing to know as a vegan, your choice that everyone will have is just beans. Pupusas de frijol, okay? So there won't be any cheese. There's no vegan cheese options, I'm sorry, but beans are so good, you are gonna love them anyways. So I got an option of one made with rice flour and one made with corn flour. So pupusa de maíz or pupusa de arroz. Those are two different ones and there's a controversy of which one is someone's favorite, right? So I got one of each. I'm gonna try the one of rice flour because I haven't had it in years. So I'm gonna have some with curtido and salsa. It's at every table. Mm. Mm. So I haven't had the rice flour one in a long time, but I really like the texture because it gets crispier on the outside. It's a little chewier than the corn flour. I really like it in the beans. The beans taste delicious, okay? Listen, the best beans are from El Salvador. I hope you know that, okay? Okay, now let's try the one, the corn flour one. The beans are the same, really the difference is just the masa. Mm. They're both good, but surprisingly, I like the rice flour one better because of the crispiness. So I think I'm gonna have a new favorite while I'm here. So definitely make sure to eat pupusas as soon as you land. But don't worry if you don't make it to Olocuilta because you can have bean pupusas at almost any location. After trying many, I have to say one of my favorites were from Restaurante Abbey in Planes de Renderos. They also had a vegan hot chocolate made with hot milk, so definitely recommend. Next, chances are you'll want some beach time, and if you're looking for a place to stay, I highly recommend this cute hotel called Concha Mar. The staff was super friendly, the ambiance was beautiful, tropical. We paid $100 USD a night for a room that fit four people, so it's great for families and it had direct access to the beach. They also provide breakfast. As a vegan, you get pan frances, beans, and plantains, but in my opinion, that's the best breakfast. Honestly, I really enjoyed my time here and I would go back. One of the places receiving the most popularity is Surf City. Surf City is a tourist project created by President Bukele to bring tourists to El Salvador with the goal to make it into one of the top tourist destinations. It focuses on displaying the amazing surf spots, stunning beaches, and El Tunco is where you'll see a lot of foreigners primarily visiting. On our way to San Salvador, we couldn't help stopping to get fresh coconut water. Tip, make sure to ask for the fresh coconut to be chopped to order and ask for the softer coconut meat and have them put them in the bag for you. The first night in the city, we decided to check out Santa Tecla for the weekend night market in Paseo del Carmen. Here you'll notice many food vendors and just by looking, you may not think there are any vegan options, but I happened to stumble upon a stand called Tipicos Betseda. They had all things elote, aka corn, and they were making griguas, which are like fresh corn pancakes. Just make sure to ask for the option without the added cheese. Typically, riguas are cooked on plantain leaves, but these were grilled straight on the comal, which I didn't mind because this made them crispy and delicious. And then to my surprise, I was told that their atol de lote, a hot corn drink, didn't have any added milk, just water. So I was beyond thrilled as this is one of my favorite drinks. Then at Tipicos Rosita, I had to try some nuegados, which are essentially fried yuca donuts served with cane sugar syrup. These were very crispy and that syrup takes it to the next level, but I'll show you guys later another spot where you can have these. And just when I thought I needed a pupusa break, we stumbled upon pupusas made on a clay comal over fire, one of the traditional forms they make them. And here I was able to add loroco flour into the beans, and I have to say, these were delicious. 
The next day we had to visit some of San Salvador's biggest tourist attractions, starting with El Boqueron. Just a one and a half mile up the lush green forest is the view of a popular crater that was believed to be formed after an eruption in 1917. There's lots of beautiful viewpoints and spots to take photos that makes the hike well worth it. Don't forget to take those photo ops and if you want you can buy some sugarcane candy on the way back down. But next we headed over to a steakhouse, don't worry, nothing to do with steak, to experience the tourist attraction everyone's talking about when visiting San Salvador, the giant slide. It's $5 to enter the park, the slide is 950 meters long, and let me tell you, it's 100% worth the hype. Let's just take a look at the experience. Can I see? And although you'll have to enjoy freshly made corn tortillas every day like these I spotted in an alley, you might be in the mood for a different vegan cuisine. Okay, so right now I'm at a restaurant called El Veggie in the neighborhood of Escalón in San Salvador. This is one of the only 100% vegan restaurants in El Salvador and they make everything in-house and they have an elaborate menu which is really nice. Just to note, when you get here it's a little confusing to have how you enter because you don't really see an entrance. You do see one on the side and you go upstairs and then you see this beautiful terrace and dining area. It's beautifully lit. So let's see what some of their items are. Okay, so I couldn't resist. I had to try their burgers because if you're in the Salvador, A, you're probably eating pupusas like every single day, which like me. So I wanted something different for a change, right? And if you look at this ooey gooey melted cheese with vegan bacon and a double burger, which they make their soy patties in house, which is pretty cool in my opinion. They also have these vegan cauliflower wings and I have another burger here that's beets and a breaded like mushroom and they make their own sunflower cream cheese kind of thing. So again, I really appreciate they make a lot of the ingredients in house. The bread, again, that they use is like whole wheat, but they also have white here, a pretzel bun, as you can see. Their potatoes, can we just talk about how their potato wedges look? Cause they look super crispy and delicious. I can't resist. Mm, so good. They already have me at the potatoes. Let me try this burger. This thing is a monster. It's like the size of my face. Okay. I do appreciate that they put the knife in the center. <laughs> I'm gonna leave the knife in there to keep everything intact. All right, cheers. Mmm. Uh. Mmm. The soy patty is very good. At other restaurants, I've had soy-based patties. I'm always kind of hesitant because Sometimes they have a weird flavor, I'm not gonna lie. But this one's really good. Nice neutral flavor, very meaty in texture. I love all the vegan melted cheese. Like, I'm a huge fan of that. I'm gonna take another bite because, eh. mm. Oh no. Mm. That's a good vegan burger. Mm. Okay, next I'm gonna try one of their cauliflower wings. Dipping it in their little sauce. They have buffalo or barbecue. I haven't had spicy all week because Salvadorians don't eat spicy, so. I went for spicy. Flavor is good. They're not crunchy. They're soft and kind of soggy, but the flavor is good. But still, it's something that's popular that they recommend to try. They are spicy though, so I appreciate that. All right, last burger to try. The Harvest Beet cut in half is a monster. Oh my gosh, when you look at it, it's beautifully layered. Let's give it a try. That's also very good. I have to say, I really appreciate that here. They put thought into how they're making the vegan burgers and the vegan dishes. Rather than copying out and just buying already pre-made vegan products. So, like, applause to them. I really appreciate that. Everything is really good here. I highly suggest you give it a try. I highly recommend and encourage that you eat Salvadorian food when you come to El Salvador. But if you want to change, El Veggie is really good for you know comfort food, burgers and wings and tacos and dessert, everything. So make sure to check out El Veggie. 
Next, it was time for a coffee break with something sweet because after all, you're in El Salvador, the 19th largest coffee producer in the world, and luckily they had plant-based milk to go with it. They're also a cafe with desserts, so I went for the almond milk-based ice cream and that iced coffee was one of the best I ever had. I even bought coffee beans to go. They also have a cute eco-friendly shop attached. Next, you gotta fight your way through traffic to check out El Centro Histórico that has been around since the 16th century. But now you can check out the monuments and the best part is watching the locals dance and a live band. You can also enjoy the cathedral and national palace and then head over to the street market. But for the next morning, I had to enjoy some traditional Salvadoran food. So now I'm at a restaurant called Tipicos Margot. It's a chain restaurant that you can find everywhere here in El Salvador, which is nice about this because they have comida típica, so traditional food from El Salvador. And if you're a vegan, you still have options here. So let me show you what you can get. So there's also breakfast time. You can get like fried plantains, platano frito with beans. You can always get beans. You must always get beans. It's like a staple food, right? So I hear I got beans. I got some fried yuca. I have some rice, steamed vegetables. And this, these are what empanadas are in El Salvador. They look kind of like buñuelos, but these are filled just with beans. So definitely worth trying these. And right now they have a promotion of yuca, which is cassava root. And you can get pupusas made out of cassava flour. So they're super for chewy and everything. I'm gonna start with this because it looks just super delicious. I've never had yuca flower pupusas. The texture is just like chewy, ooey gooey. No, the beans are delicious. Okay, the rice here does not have chicken stock or anything, so. Mm. Wow, these beans are so flavorful. And then with the yuca frita, mm. oh my god. Mm. Okay, well, let me try this. Mm. This is breakfast to go, basically. So this is plantain mashed up with beans filled inside. So you get a sweet and savory effect. That's what you eat for breakfast, typically is fried plantains with beans. So this is like a little snack to go. Everything hits the spot, you definitely gotta check it out so you can try traditional Salvadorian food vegan. And because I always crave something sweet, a must visit is Narcisa Bakery. This is a must go to spot for their vegan horchata de moro, aka the traditional Salvadorian way, freshly made donuts and cinnamon rolls. That cinnamon roll was gooey and yummy just how you want it, but the star was the passion fruit donut. You won't regret it. But if you're the nature type, you can't miss out on going to the city of Santa Ana, the second largest city in El Salvador, known for its hot spring waterfalls, volcanoes, and most popular being Volcán y Matepec. It's definitely worth the one and a half hour hike to the view at the top that sits around 7,800 feet above sea level. It offers spectacular views and hiking routes, plus a peek into the turquoise crater lake at the summit. Just be careful because it's super windy at the top, but it's 100% the I made it selfies. But you can't leave San Salvador without visiting El Lago de Cotepeque, which is a crater lake measuring about 2,400 feet. It's surrounded by restaurants and you can take a ferry or jet around with jet skis. Definitely a place you could spend the whole day. If you're interested in a merienda treat that can be made vegan, this is one you have to try. So when you're in El Salvador, another typical food that you need to try are nuegados de yuca. Yuca is cassava root and they, what they do is they make it into a flour and they form a dough, kind of like donuts, and they serve it to you with sugarcane honey. All vegan, but you do have to ask if they make it with egg because a lot of times people do use egg to just make them fluffier, but they, another traditional way is to make them without egg, so you just have to ask who does it. Here I'm at Cafe Cali in the city of Ataco, which is in like the coffee plantation area and they make it to order 
and you can ask it here without egg. So she made it without egg. And then you can have chilate. So chilate and nuegados are usually served together because it cuts the sweetness of the nuegados, right? And so chilate is, is an atoll, so it's a hot drink made out of toasted corn and it has ginger and so let's give this a try. Oh, I love that all the honey is down here at the bottom. Mm. Mm. You won't really notice that there is an egg. To me, it still tastes chewy and fluffy. I love it. Let's try this. Mm. Mm. This is more of a neutralizing, kind of like how when you drink coffee with sweets, but it's very nutritious. It's made of corn. It's delicious. Definitely worth giving a try if you make it to a taco. Last stop was a health store restaurant that I couldn't leave without a try, Soya Nutribar. Hola, soy Marisol Alvarado. Este, estoy a cargo de Soya Nutribar, restaurante y market de comida saludable. Tenemos productos y opciones veganas. Todos nuestros productos son elaborados en casa y también usamos productos orgánicos, regionales y locales. Nuestro fundador es un doctor en medicina biológica y es que siempre está a la vanguardia de todas las tendencias y, y cambios que puedan haber en la industria alimenticia. The reason I wanted to come here is because it's beautiful in here. Like the minute you walk in, you're just welcomed by this like tropical ambiance. There's trees and plants everywhere. It's, the ambiance is 10 out of 10. But they also offer a lot of vegan options. They're not a fully vegan restaurant, but it is nice that they, they are adaptable and can make a lot of dishes vegan. So I've got quite a few things here. I had to get a vegan cheese plate because they make their own vegan cheeses, right? I gotta try this ooey gooey looking mozzarella. Let me put a nice little cherry tomato and basil on top. When they ask you for the bread, the house bread has egg, but not the sourdough. So make sure to ask for the sourdough bread for this plate. Cheers. Mmm. Mmm. The cheese is so creamy. The basil and the tomatoes just takes it to the next level. This is so good. It's not very common to find that. I want to, I'll, I'll say this is one of the only places that does it in another restaurant. Okay, let me try their ceviche because they have a mushroom based ceviche. I freaking love ceviche. If you've seen any of my other past videos of where I've traveled, I always try vegan ceviche. So let's try this one. Mmm. Mmm. Mm-hmm. This is super refreshing. If you've ever had ceviche, the thing I really like about it is the freshness, right? The tanginess with the lemon juice and that coconut milk base. It's like super flavorful. I really enjoy this. I definitely recommend. Note that they don't serve it to you with chips. You have to buy at the store. They have a packet of a couple chips, so make sure to do that. Okay, and last but not least, let me try some ramen because it's been a while since I've had some ramen. So yeah, the craving's called. The mushrooms look beautifully grilled. I'll, I'll give them that. Well, let's give this a try. Mm. The broth is nice and earthy. It has like a, you can tell that it's like a soy sauce base, a miso base with the mushrooms. I'm not gonna say it's like the ramen you find in the US. I'm not gonna say that, but it's good. It's good, like I'll, I'll happily eat this. So again, I'm just glad that you know, they put a lot of thought and effort into the food. Right now, they do not have vegan breakfast options, but they're working on it. So that's at least good to know. You can only get like an avocado toast, which has to be vegan. You're probably tired of that option, but at least there's an option, right? They also have a little cafe where for matcha upstairs, and it's, it's just super cute. There's a store. You can shop for your local ingredients here as well. So definitely a place worth checking out. But you can't leave without trying their passion fruit cheesecake. It's cashew based and it does have honey because they only wanted to use naturally locally sourced ingredients. So you can decide if that's okay with you, but it's so creamy and refreshing. You'll want to take one to go like I did. Okay, so overall, is El Salvador a country that you should visit? And the answer is absolutely yes. A lot of people have been wondering, is it safe to visit? And I understand because I too had that question at some point, but once I came here, just the friendliness of the people here, of how just easily they'll say, hey, good morning, good afternoon, you need help. Like everybody here is so hospitable and I really would hope that everybody can enjoy that at some point. When you're walking down tourist attractions, you can hear different languages, you can tell tourism is already happening. There's a lot of great food here, traditional and a lot of vegan restaurants. Yes, the vegan food scene here is smaller, but it started already and that I think is amazing, right? 
So I really hope people, when you come here, is that you enjoy the traditional food, the culture, the tourism. There's so much to do in this small country in Central America, right? You think that there isn't going to be a lot to do, but there's tons. I didn't even get to do everything that I wanted to do. So I definitely think you should come visit and give it a try and see for yourself what you think. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe and let me know what you want to see next. I'll catch you next time on Ready to Be. Bye.